Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Standard Education Talks. My name is Gigi, and I'll be your host today. And we are very happy to have invited Dr. Koa Hui, the head of school at Christian Alliance PC Lao Memorial International School. Um, thank you for being here today, Dr. Hui. Thank you, uh, Gigi. Today, our topic is a bilingual education, nurturing bilingual world citizens. So uh, to start off, Dr. Hui, why don't you start off by breaking down the concept for our audiences first. So what is a bilingual education? Okay, thank you, Gigi. I think bilingual education in its most simple term will mean that it involves teaching the academic content in two languages with varying amount of each language used in accordance with the language model. At CAPCL, uh, we like to see children's learning in 65% of the day with English and 35% of the day with Mandarin and traditional script. And so that is how we run uh, our bilingual education. Um, so it's, uh, it's an approach that encompasses more than language learning. Yes, I think in bilingual education, there are actually a lot of benefits. Not only children will learn to become proficient in two languages, English and Chinese, they actually learn to become more resilient in solving problems and overcoming challenges. Um, they become confident in times of change and they become responsible global citizen where they understand a greater they have a greater understanding of eastern and western culture a broader knowledge and appreciation of different cultural values so i think bilingual education is very timely for the place in hong kong at this moment mm, understand uh, what are some of the questions that parents may ask you when you explain about the school's bilingual model for example, right. you mentioned about 65% uh, of English and then 35% of Chinese. Mm -hmm. so how is it implemented in the classwork? Right. Um, in our school, 65% of the time we'll teach in English and 35% of the time the teaching is in Mandarin with traditional script. Our school uses the Canadian curriculum. It's within it, there are 10 different subjects, English, Chinese, Mathematics, science, social study, and of these four, five core subjects, three of them are taught in English, English, social study, and science. And Chinese is taught in Mandarin, and mathematics is taught bilingually. What I mean bilingually means that the children will have the textbook in English, and the teaching is in Mandarin. So that is one way that we teach bilingually at CAPCL. In addition to the core academic subjects, there are five specialty subjects. There are arts, Bible, health, music, and physical education. Learning a language is only fun if you understand the culture. And for young children to understand culture, very important is that they experience their learning. How do you teach culture with experience? When you teach them to appreciate arts, music, and when they play. And those are the ways our children will learn how bilingual education will enrich their understanding of different culture. Right, I uh, understand. Thank you, Dr. Hui. Uh, you mentioned the Alberta curriculum, mm. and some of our audience's parents may not be familiar with what the curriculum offers. So what are the strengths, what are the special features of the curriculum? Right. I think in Hong Kong, if you look for um, international school, there are just so many options. You can have a UK curriculum, US curriculum, Australian curriculum, um, even IB curriculum and Canadian curriculum. At CAPCL, ever since we started in 1992, we have used the Canadian curriculum. Uh, particularly, we use it from the province of Alberta. Alberta has a city called Edmonton, that is the provincial capital. In the city of Edmonton, there are already 13 other English Chinese bilingual schools. And those schools using English and Chinese bilingually to teach the children. And they are not just started now, they have had bilingual Chinese English schools for the last 35 years. In fact, they have an institute that actually study how bilingual education is best fitted for students learning and since we decided um, to make it the most uh, relevant for people in Hong Kong we think that the Canadian curriculum especially from Alberta with the bilingual education is very fitting for places in Hong Kong so that's why we've been using the Alberta curriculum mm, I see 
So the curriculum is very experienced in offering a bilingual model for yes, students. Yes, it is. Right. Um, well, I think a lot of parents in Hong Kong, they are facing a kind of dilemma of choosing between international school and local school. Because our children go into local school, many of them are very strong in Chinese and their English may not be as strong, whereas international school students, they are very, they are highly fluent in English, but their Chinese may not be up to par. Mm. Some of them perhaps can speak Chinese, but may not be able to write and read it. And your school, CAPCL, actually ensures children are equally grounded in both languages, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, we think that it's very important for children to learn English and Chinese in a school environment that is structured where they learn not only to read, write, they also learn to present the language in the way that shows that they're competent and confident. And in our schools, that's why when we teach, we would have uh, mathematics being taught in a bilingual way where children also learn how to solve problems in different ways. In fact, I think, Gigi, I should maybe spend a little bit more time to talk about the benefits of a bilingual education. Cool. We choose it from Alberta, Canada, because they actually have done research on bilingual educations. And what they have found is that when children, they're not just learning language because they come by, but they have systematically learning it at the school. They have found that their children have actually have higher score in nonverbal and verbal intelligence. And when they're trying to check the so, um, so list, um, scholastic achievement, what they found is that children have better attention span and they improve in their memory ability. And also when they come to divergent thinking tasks, they are doing very well. So bilingual education is not just about language development. It actually helps children to build their stamina in learning uh, for their whole life. So we think that is very important. And when they learn two languages, they actually understand the sentence structure, grammar uh, of different language better. They have more vocabularies. And in fact, they improve in their community, communication ability. So we think that bilingual education has a lot of uh, offers for our children um, in this time. Yes. Right. So there is a diverse range of benefits mm. to a bilingual education. Uh, well, I would like to ask more about the actual practice. So how is it implemented in the daily classroom? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the, we have the homeroom system where we have two teachers uh, looking after the children in the same classroom. In the homeroom system, one of them is a native English speaker, the other one is a Mandarin native speaker. And two teachers are also in the same classroom, although they teach at different times uh, using different language, but it will help children to uh, learn the language readily in the classroom. So when it comes to um, English, science and social study time, children will learn all the subject content in English. When it is mathematics time, then they will have the book in English and they will learn it in Mandarin. When it's Chinese time, definitely they're learning it in Mandarin. And when it comes to the specialty subjects, they go to different parts of the school and depending on who is their teacher, then they will either learning it in English or Mandarin. So when they come to the whole day, they spend a lot of time uh, communicating with one another in Mandarin as well as in English. Mm. Uh, how many students are there in a typical class? Right. At this academic year, a typical class have about 22 students in the class. Some of the classes are smaller, but we are aiming for a class with an average of about 22 students. So it's a very small learning community mm -hmm. and I suppose the teachers uh, know every student very well so that they can adapt uh, the teaching methods, teaching approach to each individual student. Yes, it is intentional for us to keep the learning community in a small size. Um, we think that it allows teachers to have more opportunity to observe the children, to allow them to learn to uh, work with one another. Um, it gives children more time to share their thoughts with one another. So we like to keep the school size, uh, the class size small, so that children have uh, more opportunity to 
participate during the class time. Um, they also have time to share their thoughts with one another. Um, they grow in their self-awareness of what is the interest and their strength and also area that they can improve on. It allows them a lot of time to express their thoughts in words and in their ideas in the writing. So I think um, a small learning community is very good for young learners. Um, so CPCL is actually a primary school mm. and aside from the small learning community, the small class size, the school also adopts the homework practice. Yes. So what is the homework practice? All right. Um, for us, we believe that our teachers are the local parents. They are like the parents in here. We want children in the school to have a sense of community, a sense of being home away from home. So our teachers will look after them like parents and we like the way it's like a dolphin parenting where the, you know dolphin is a very playful animal and they enjoy being the role model and guide the youngs and that's what we really want to see in our school where the teachers are the homeroom teachers that they spend a lot of time with the children guiding them playing with them and showing them how to learn uh, in different subjects using different language and I would say perhaps it is trying to be firm but at the same time being very caring and that's what we really want to do in the homeroom system. Mm. Uh, you say that homeroom systems, our system actually benefits younger children mm. more compared to perhaps older children. I think because in young children, um, you need to observe their needs, be able to see the holistic needs. So I think in the homeroom system, children don't have a math teacher for math lesson, a Chinese teacher for Chinese lesson, a music teacher for music lesson. In that way, children only understand learning as if subject by subject. But we like learning to be a holistic way, in a way that the teachers will teach all the subjects and allowing the opportunity to blend the subjects together in a thematic approach. It also allows children to share and integrate um, the learning uh, with one another a little bit more easily uh, in a homeroom system. Uh, I would like to go back a little bit mm -hmm. to the structured uh, bilingual education because it mm -hmm. talked about having two teachers each specializing in Chinese and English. Mm -hmm. So what, what are the benefits of this practice? Uh, perhaps compared to having only one teacher teaching both Chinese and English to children. Okay, I think children they will know that when they speak to one teacher, they will always speak in English. When they speak to another teacher, they will always speak in Mandarin. It gives them a lot of time to practice and then they can focus um, their learning and if they have questions, they can always go to that teacher and ask. And I think that is a good way for them to practice and um, improve their proficiency in the language. Right. Mm. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hui. You're welcome. Uh, well, let's leave the bilingual program and the school practice uh, for now. Uh, because looking at the school development, mm. CAPCL, the campus in Kowloon cities, is actually, I mean, has actually reopened as an international primary school. Mm. So, what happened p prior to the reopening? Right. Actually, our school, with the sponsoring body being the church who has had school in Hong Kong for the last 60 years, um, they are all together 17 local and international schools. So CAPCL start is store for children in 1992, being the first international schools of KTAC, um, the church. And um, we have been in, in here for the last 25 years, um, building up the Canadian education. And in year 2017, all the children and parents and the teachers of the school moved to the second international schools uh, of, uh, established by the church um, that is in Lai Chi Kuo. So this building has closed down for renovation since 2017. And for the last two years and a half, um, the church has explored the options and they find that young education is very um, early education and elementary education is very important for building a good foundation so they decided to spend the time uh, to plan and renovate the school so that it has the amenity that is suitable for bilingual education also for elementary young children mm, right uh, so what are the enhanced facilities what right. can students and parents expect 
Okay, so when you first walk into the school, you would be able to see that we have a scripture wall uh, with different language. And it is the school verse about the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And we want children to come to the school to learn and they will also learn to humble themselves and be diligent in the learning. And next to it, you will be able to see as they train up a child in the way they should go. And even when they get older, they will not depart from it. We want to train our children to be uh, a lifelong learner. They will be thankful for what they're going through in life. And that is very important for us. And when you keep walking into the school, to the cover play space, you will see that there are different games being available for children to play. One is helping them to reinforce their the phonics system, the other one is to learn the pinyin system and after the cover play space you can walk into the outdoor play space I talk about a lot about play because we know playing is very important for young learner in the outdoor play space we have the play set where children can learn to socially bond with others uh, they can take adventure they can imagine with their friends we have a basketball court also a, a soccer pitch so those are the place where children can be active learners and if you go up to the classrooms you will see the homeroom system that I have just talked about where two teachers will share the homeroom with all the children in that class with about 22 students we have a treehouse library that is why we are now having the broadcasting um, it's a place where children learn to read and explore English and Chinese books we have the CA maker space is a place where children uh, put the imagination into reality that they actually um, build with their hands um, you know when they have an idea um, they have to practice and try it out so and make the space is very uh, suiting and important for early learning um, situation um, we also have the heavenly studios this is a place where our children learn how to sing and they will dance in the heavenly studio so those are the places that we have at so far uh, when I say so far it's because there's more to be coming um, we want to make this as a place where learning is about play participate and possibility children will actively choose to play and participate in the learning and when we don't only ask close-ended question children full of imaginations is able to give us a lot of possibility into the future so that's what we've been doing um, since the last two years and making the renovation so so far we started in August we have a hundred and fifty children coming here from preparatory that's about age five all the way to grade three well it's a fabulous campus and uh, on top of the school development the academic uh, the school also emphasizes the holistic development mm. of students so what is the experience like at the school okay very good question um, our school logo is actually a metaphor of a tree planted by the streams of water which uses fruit in season and its leaf does not wither whatever the person will do will prosper and that is the story behind our school logo and the tree actually is a way we teach our children what education is like what we believe is building the foundation so in holistic education we have uh, focused on four domains the four H first would be the heart we want children to learn to guard the heart because that is the wellspring of their life they have to have a good intention and motivation for the learning of whatever they do we are spending a lot of time to cultivate their habits because it's very important to build good learning habits habit where they will learn to look after themselves and care for the community so those are the two very important things that we want to see happening in primary education and that is what we call the foundation guarding the heart building the good habit then in school with the bilingual education we want children to learn knowledge and that is the head and they will use the knowledge to serve others in the school community 
at their home and also in our neighborhood. So we like to see children getting into action with their hands working together. And that is the holistic education that I'm talking about, which is embedded in, this, in the school logo, where our children, every day when they come to school, they will be able to be um, reminded that that's why they are here for, that they are here to build good habits, they are here to guard their heart, they are here to learn with their head, and they have to apply what they learn with their hands. And that's what we would like to see in holistic education. Right. Thank you, Dr. Hui. Mm. Uh, well, I suppose these four H principles is also in line with the school Christian values because mm. CAPCL is actually a Christian school. Yes. Uh, so how does being a Christian school uh, further influence the school practice and the school philosophy? Right. Um, in our school, as a Christian school, it's very important that we teach our children um, to be faithful and to be fruitful. As I mentioned, like a tree, you need to be faithful in cultivating the environment for growth. But children also learn to be fruitful, that they have to bear fruit. And we teach our children the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control and these are the character elements that we want our children to develop throughout the time they're at school so i think it is not just about knowledge it's about building the person it's a holistic education of the person being a person who is loving who is caring in our school mission we talk about them being christ-like servant leader because we know that our 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 society our generation need leaders and we need leaders who are serving who are willing to have a serving heart for other people and we want them to build as if in our in a mission to talk about they have to be the example in what they say in what they do and coming back to the heart it has to be in faith in love and in purity the intent for what they're doing um, the good deed it's not because they just want recognition and praise they're doing it because that's the right thing to do and that's very important for us as they're young to embed these values into them and values are important and you need to start when they're young and we believe that the Christian education, bilingual education will add together helping children to build a confidence um, so that when they go into um, high school or when they move into the workplace that they will have the language to serve the community around them. Mm, right, so the school is actually preparing students, children for life yes. beyond the classroom. Right. Yeah. Um, I think we have covered quite a lot of grants mm -hmm. and would you like to talk more about or share more about instilling a socially conscious mindset in mm. the children from such a young age from primary school? Very good. Um, as I mentioned, we use the Alberta curriculum from Canada and there is a framework for learning. And what we believe is children is the student is the center of our decision making. Yes, while they're learning literacy and numeracy, in us we are learning two languages, they're developing their competence. And when I talk about the competence in Alberta, we talk about not only they learn how to communicate, actually uh, we talk about they have to communicate with wisdom. And how does that work? In Alberta system, there is a frame that talk about we have to teach them to be digitally literate. At the same time, we teach them to be lifelong learner. We want them to learn to collaborate and develop the leadership skills. We also want them to be a critical thinker, decision maker, and problem solver. We also want them to be responsible. Responsibility is very important. Children learn to be responsible for themselves, for their own culture, for their society, for their environment, for the world. And when children learn all these competence during the school year, we know the communications is going to be communication with wisdom. Because it's not just about what you say, it is about how you say it, how you understand the context of the things that you're saying. And when everything is in the proper weight, you will see that the person has wisdom. And that's what we are looking and aspiring for, for our children, not just to learn the language, it is just a medium for them to serve the world with the language that they have 
with the biblical learning that they have. And in our school, we also talk about children to identify themselves, who they are in Christ. And we have 10 characteristics that we will go through in the six years or seven years of the elementary education that they learn to be beauty creator, they learn to be a nature enjoyer, they learn to be servant worker, justice seeker, community builders, um, and when they are learning who they are, they build a confidence and when they're confident, then they're willing to go out and serve the world with the love that they have inside to flow out and serve other people um, to really touch life and that's what makes education meaningful. Mm. Mm. Um, how important do you think it is to have a mindset to contribute to the community at this testing and challenging time? I think it is very timely and is very important. Um, for young children, they will find life fulfillment when they can give. People shouldn't always just be consumer. When they know that they're contributing to the society, um, it is a sense of like, uh, importance in their life, the sense of significance. And children need to know, even they're very young, they can prepare themselves not just for the future, even for now, they can take action in um, benefiting the community, in serving one another uh, with the word, with the action. It all started with the heart and building the right habits. And that's why I think it is important to start when they're young to talk about these values with them. Mm. Mm. Well, and I think the 4H principles and the three metaphors are very concrete. Uh, images, concrete metaphors to communicate these important messages to children mm. of such a young age. Yes. Right. Um, so parents who are interested, they can actually come and visit the school. Yes, yes. Um, in our school website, actually, there is a place where parents who are interested with CAPCL to um, subscribe into our info sessions. So we have info sessions on weekends as well as some of the evenings so that parents can come and get to know about the school. Um, and then we would be able to see whether um, admission for next year is a possibility for their children. Mm. Uh, when will the admission start? Admission have actually started already um, and we will run our admission season until about December. Dr. Hui, would you have any closing comment on bilingual education, which is our topic today? Right. Um, I think bilingual educations have a lot of advantage and benefits for young learners and it means that when they start young, the benefit will be more enhanced and children learning two languages is going to be a good foundation for them because when they're learning two languages, it's not just about the language, it's about training them to solve problems, helping them to face challenges uh, in life. It also helps them with better, um, uh, that, uh, better memory tasks and also can focus better. So it just prepares them for life. Um, and I think it is a good option for parents to consider bilingual education at a time like this. So I know that the application procedure has already been started. So for parents who are interested in enrolling their children into CAPCL, um, what would you suggest them, advise them to prepare for? Okay. Well, we like to know a little bit of the children. Um, so I think it would be important for them to give us their most recent report card so that we have a chance to know what they have studied before, uh, where they're from, uh, know a little bit about their personality. Um, we also have other documents like the birth certificate and other information that is required when you go into our website, you'll be able to find all the required information. Um, and once we have all the information, then we will read over and um, the child's profile and, um, and then we will schedule a time uh, for children to come in where we will meet with them. Uh, usually, we like to have a group of children meet together and we are looking at them playing with one another, their way of interacting with one another. Um, the whole interview is conducted in English. Uh, what we really want is to see if children feel comfortable uh, speaking in English how they converse with one another um, when they play together, whether they like to um, talk with one another, how do they solve problems. I think at 
overall, we really just want to get to know the child, to know if they enjoy studying, what they like and what they, they not like, um, just to know about the their life and um, their strengths and to be able to just converse and see um, you know whether they enjoy coming to our school so uh, very relaxing I would say in our interview process right uh, so it's such a well-rounded assessment and well I think children may perhaps they would get stressed Mm. The um, we usually start with like chari- uh, uh, sharing with them stories, uh, we ask them what they like and we have ways of uh, letting them get used to the school environment um, to relax. Uh, we'll take them around in different parts in the classroom, uh, they get to play our uh, school um, uh, resources and board games so um, I think it's not like so scary to come into our interview we just really want to get to know um, the children and also the parents even though parents are not being interviewed uh, we, we like to have them come as well um, to get to know the school um, to know what they want to see the children to become uh, why would they choose our school um, I think it's very important that um, communication between home and school is very close and is full of respect and truth and peace. So that's what we're looking for um, in our interview process, to have an open dialogue, to seek what is the best uh, for each child. Mm. Uh, well, I think a lot of parents are interested in knowing more about the interview. Mm. So do you have any tips for the children? I think it's very important that before the day or the night before the interview, children would have a good rest sleep. Um, if they come, it would be important for them to have a good breakfast or lunch before they come for the interview so that they are ready uh, for the time that they will spend in the classroom with me. Um, I think children need to wear clothes that they are comfortable with. They don't have to dress up for a big occasion. They just have to be themselves. So um, we want them to play together. So it's really important for them to um, put on clothes where they're comfortable with. Um, then they're able to move around and um, you know share with their friends. Uh, just be themselves. It's very important uh, mm. for them. <laughs> Okay, um, well, um, we are almost reaching the end, Dr. Mm. Bray. Uh, so thank you so much for CAPCL for their generous support and Dr. He for coming here and share with us today. Mm. Thank you. And now uh, stay tuned to the Standard Education Talks and we hope to see you again in the next section. So have a very wonderful rest of the day. Thank you so much and goodbye. Bye.